Cheryl, I can't believe it. Oh, you mean you're still in shock because of the US presidential elections? No, Cheryl, it's something that's closer to us, the elected presidency in Singapore. And why do I need to care about it? Of course you need to care about it. He's the unifying figure of the state. Well, so many bills were passed in 2016 and I don't even understand. And I guess my view doesn't matter as well because we'll be passed any case. No, no, no. If you are ever going to sign an insurance policy or going to sign a contract, are you going to tell me that you're not going to read all the terms and conditions before you sign? Actually, yes. I would say I won't even read it because there's so many pages of technical jargons which I'm not going to understand. So I'll just sign. Okay, Cheryl, then we need to talk about it and make it easier to understand. Okay, Cheryl, let's start with the Government Proceedings Act. In the past, if someone engages in a lawsuit with the government, and let's say if he loses the case, the government can claim for legal fees up to two lawyers. But now, there's no cap. Meaning to say, if I'm being sued by the government now, you've got 10 lawyers, and I'll be liable for all that? Yes, Cheryl, if the court says so. Well, why would I want to sue the government? Well, I'm saying that just in case, if someone wants to get a court to review certain actions of the government, and even if he thinks that he has a valid case, okay, bearing in mind the unlimited resources of the government, would the person still do so? But what if I'm being sued by the government? Ah, now you're thinking. Okay, Kenan, I've heard about this administration of justice bill. Mm. Um, I want to understand that I cannot express my opinion on cases that I read about in the news. Well, you still can express your opinion, but you can get sued if, let's say, the court finds that the opinion actually has an influence on the ongoing court proceedings. But you must also remember that the threshold for the content has been lowered. So, what are the penalties if I'm found guilty? It can be a $100,000 fine, or three years jail term, or even both. And does this actually apply to everyone? In the bill itself, there's an exemption clause which allows the government to make comments on ongoing proceedings if let's say that the government believes that this is made in the interest of the public. That's actually quite vague. Let's go back to talking about the elected presidency. What are the changes? For well, Cheryl, there are two key changes to the elected presidency. Firstly, is the tightening of the criteria for the elected presidency. Second, is the expansion of the power of the CPA. The CPA is the Council of Presidential Advisors. And what do they do? Well, the president has to consult the CPA when executing one of his main roles, which is whether or not to tap on the reserves. I'm voting for the president, and I'm not voting for the CPA, mm. right? Well, exactly. And this is why the Workers' Party proposes reverting to the appointed presidency, where the president is still an important unifying figure of the state. And if that's the case, who's going to safeguard our reserves? Well, we've also proposed that this role to be entrusted to a Senate that is elected by the people. Hmm, that's quite a good idea. Well, I hope that we have made these issues easy enough for you all to understand. Well, it has certainly made it much clearer for me. And I'm going to start my 2017 by reading about issues that would affect Singapore. That's great, Cheryl. But do know that there's something exciting coming up in 2017? It's the 60th anniversary of the Workers' Party. Oh, okay. That's something you look forward to. And will I be seeing you next year? Well, you got to stay tuned to find out. <laughs>